No. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with the Queens. Today we are talking about career change, something on a lot of people's minds. You don't want to miss this show, and we are not joking. Stay right there. Welcome to Coffee with the Queens, empowering you to grow and protect your cash, credit, castle, and kingdom. Have you ever heard the phrase, get your ducks in a row, and you feel like you haven't done that? We share learned lessons and practical advice to help guide you to a life of financial freedom. Empowerment is key. So grab your coffee and crown and let's get to it. Take it away, Queen Tammy. Morning, ladies. ladies. How are you doing today? Good morning. It's April Fool's Day. It's April Fool's Day. It is. Exciting. It is. We it's have April a fun Fools. guest. What do you think's in my cup? April Fool's tequila? (laughs) That's Cinco de Mayo. You're too early. (laughs) Um, I'm so excited because today is one of the funniest people I know that we have on as a guest. She's she's a friend and and just very funny, but very informative. Um, So I'm so excited for today's show. So stay right there. Meanwhile, before we get started, everyone, please hop on and engage and comment as we go because we give away prizes for those who participate. So we would love to give away prizes for you. So question for you today, ladies, is um, have you ever been in a career or doing something and just one day you woke up and you said, you know what, I think I need a change. I'm ready for the next chapter. I, I want to go. And how did you know it was time to go? That's the question. That I'll, I'll go first. That has happened a few times for me, actually. Um, and I think most people that know me know that I was an actress for a very long time. So there was that transition, which wasn't an overnight decision. It wasn't super clean and clear cut. Um, but there was one day when I realized that there wasn't a cell in my body that was still attached to that life. So I then was able to let it go, but I hung on for a while. The one that was the most clear though, I decided to be a grown up for a while, according to my, my family and get a job. And I was working in a real estate related industry and I would go out and pound the pavement and I was, I was a sales rep and I made money, but I absolutely hated it. It was very hard on me emotionally. It was difficult. It made me grow. It was like, I'm very grateful for the time, honestly. But when I was crying on my way to my car in my own driveway, my husband said, please quit this job. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I cried all day long, but when I was actually already crying before I even got to my car, it was there was a huge sign that it probably was not in alignment with me. So I was able to let that one go. Yeah, that's a big sign there. <laughs> when you start crying when you don't like something. Mine was just this morning. <laughs> I just want to switch jobs now. <laughs> after yeah, after what, 56 years. No, you know, my my aha in the in the switch was when I was working in Jordan. I was dancing in Jordan and I woke up one morning, I said, It's time to go home. And I did. I, I was on the next flight. I just, and I never looked back because I did everything I wanted to do. It's just, I was tired and I wanted a new chapter in my life. And I came back and I did it. Yeah. So mine was um, many years ago, you know, I spent my first 16 years working for the federal government and I ran an IT shop in Kansas city. I, w- I worked for the regional office uh, and I created a, a grants management system, which at that time, we didn't call them apps today, they're called apps. And it was not a phone, it was on a computer terminal, a big, huge screen setting on your desktop. But I created this new way to process grants. And wow, it was so cool. So the, the corporate people in my world, headquarters at, at DC said, wow, would you do this for all the regions? Because it was such productivity. I said, sure, I would love to do this. So two years later, this is the government, we still don't have an RFP. We still don't have any understanding of what I'm doing. And I just woke up and I said, I can't do this anymore. I kept showing them how to save millions of dollars, millions of dollars, and nobody cared. And I said, I can't do this. I cannot work in a job where I don't get rewarded. And so I told my mother I was quitting and talking about leaving corporate life. I left government life, which is lifelong job. Yes. And I just left and I started, I became an entrepreneur. And I started the 50th computer store in the country in Kansas City, Missouri. Wow. That's a great story. Big jump. 
you know, the, the I, I made a huge jump. Huge the thing jump. that I hear with you ladies right now is that um, I don't know how much thought you had given into, okay, what is my next gig? You know, it was just sort of a feeling that you were feeling. Um, with me, I, I was lucky enough to kind of learn through the gig that I was in. I was in a corporate job and um, I was set out, I was hired to do a certain thing, you know, around marketing for this company. And we achieved more than we set out to do within about a two year period. But during that period, I noticed gaps, like big gaps in what, we weren't solving that were big issues that we needed to solve. And sometimes corporate, like your story, Kathy, is just not willing to go there. They're like, well, we don't really care about that, but I really cared about that. So that's when I knew I had to move somewhere that would support me in that sort of, you know, trajectory that I was on to solve that problem as most of us do as entrepreneurs. And, and that led me to this life of e-commerce and Amazon that I'm now on, you know, the past 10 years. So I'm grateful for that. But sometimes it's shown to you and you know that you're not a right fit anymore. And sometimes you spot kind of trends, like I could see Amazon was getting, uh, you know, going that way. And our guest, that's why I'm so excited about our guest today, because she talks about both of those things. Um, so, you know, stay right there if you're, uh, you know, and follow us and make sure you're commenting today, because if you have this thought in your mind, um, as many, many people do after this particular year that we've had to change careers or, or turn the chapter, um, let's let's dig into it a little bit more. Before we dig into it, though, we do have to thank our sponsor for today. So our sponsor for today is this is perfectly timed, you guys perfectly timed because if you had just 90 days to get your body in shape for summer you'd be starting um now right and it would have to be fun and you can finally get rid of the the covid last night it was with some friends that looked at each other and said yeah we gained the covid 19. i don't know if that's a thing <laughs> you gained the COVID 10 19 20 whatever and you just want to feel better our sponsor for today is our very own so Helia, right here, she's got her Nouveau Fitness. We're talking about getting you sculpted in a brand new you in 90 days. Look at her down there. So this is a multicultural <laughs> inspired fitness curriculum program. I'm talking, this is fun. It's a dance inspired fitness program founded on dance styles from around the world with the enhancement of traditional Middle Eastern and folkloric dance moves. She calls it a multicultural inspired fitness class. I feel like I'm gonna learn world techniques of dance by just doing yeah, it well. really cool. So we're bringing together an inspired and eclectic collection of driving beats and hypnotic rhythms and her very own distinct dance moves. So we're going to be talking about the music of the Middle East, Africa, Australia, Brasilia, India, Hawaii, Spain, and more. If you like music and you like that worldly feel, you can get it all and get yourself in shape in 90 days. So click on the link that's on your screen here or scan that great little barcode and join our, look at that great shot of you, girl. You're so inspiring. So that's it, everybody. Take advantage of that. And in 90 days, let us all get rid of the COVID whatever's we got, right? The 10s, the 15s, the 19s. Hopefully it's not more than that, but. I mean, like the okay. freshman 10, we're, we're talking about like the yes. COVID 20 or whatever it is. Exactly. I guess that's, that's it. And I certainly feel a little mushier. So thank you, Sahela, for being our sponsor today. We want to thank you for that. Yes. So um, today's guest, as we were talking about, is very exciting. So Elena Saris is a criminal defense attorney. She's a former stand-up comic. Now, if you think that's crazy, what do you actually hear her talk? She's going to make you laugh. And seven-figure e-commerce seller multi-talented, I'm telling you. After a successful 25-year career as a deputy public defender in some pretty big cases, we want to give you a little hint of what's coming up, um, she realized it was time for chapter two. She started from scratch. Her Shopify stores have generated $4 million in sales in just the last two years. So let's meet this incredibly diverse woman who will inspire you to possibly make a shift to change and start something new in your own life. Welcome, Elena Saris. Yay. Hi. Hi. Who she is. Wow. Pressure to be funny now. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love that? I mean, you did, you actually did stand up comedy for a while, which takes an incredible amount of courage. So I just want to honor you for that because it's, that's hard. I mean, just, this isn't even on our agenda. I just have to ask what was like, what was it like that very first day? Well, after 25 years or at the time, probably 
I don't know, 10, 15 years as a trial lawyer, it wasn't terrible. You know, I mean, right. let's, the worst that would happen is like someone would yell, show me your tits, or they would like say something, <laughs> you know. Like, that doesn't happen in the courtroom, right? Yeah, that didn't happen in the courtroom. When jurors didn't <laughs> like me, rarely did anyone ask me to take off an article of clothing, I will I will say. <laughs> and the, and the, cons, the stakes were a little higher in court. The stakes were <laughs> a little higher. So yeah, if I didn't get a laugh, I, I would live. It was, it was okay. But most, you know, most people, because I didn't do like mean humor, I was really, um, I, the, the, the audience was always really encouraging with me. Oh, that's good. And that had to be, you know, when we were talking to you just briefly before we came on, I realized that there's this juxtaposition in our minds of the criminal lawyer and you deal with homicide, right? I mean, you deal with like some pretty heavy stuff. Am I correct? And, yeah. and comedy. So well, it's an outlet. <laughs> yeah, it, it is an outlet. I mean, when I was training young lawyers, I was I would make them do uh, improv comedy training to get, get them to think on their feet, you know, so I think that helps a lot. So I think they there's sort of an interconnectivity between just sort of, you know, thinking on the fly, trying to make, you know, in, in a, on stand up, you're trying to be funny, but in, in a courtroom, you're trying to be impactful and persuasive. But both of those, you know, the triggers for both of those are you hear something and you twist it around and you give it back, right? right. And so oh, they are more connected. Yeah, that's so good. I actually recommend improv for people that are uh, getting in their head when they're getting up to get on uh, like on camera to present on camera or getting up on stage and they're having trouble because they're getting in their head. It's a great way to release that. So when you were transitioning um, at any point in any of these changes and these things that you were doing in your life from that to e-commerce to whatever, what is it? Did you look at trends? Because as Tammy said, we, we all talked about the way it felt to get out. But were you actually looking ahead at what would be a good choice? Initially, no. Initially, it was the same thing that you all are talking about. It was like, I mean, and, and I think, you know, to get away from comedy for just a sec, I mean, this was really serious for me. I, I was, I went to law school to be a public defender. I didn't write a resume. I didn't want to do anything. This was my calling. And I know there are people out there that we're talking to today that in those kind of jobs, you're a teacher, you're a doctor, you're a nurse, where you really feel like this profound sense of guilt and, and you know, failure if you leave what you thought was a calling. And I remember when I was, you know, thinking about this, um, I went to church one morning and as everyone was clearing out, I was sitting in the back and the my friends in the front are like pointing at me and pointing at this guy and they're doing this. And I'm like, what? and this stranger walks up to me and he says, I, I heard that you're considering, you know, moving on from a job you thought was a calling. And I'm like, God, my friends are like nosy and talking about my business with, you know, but I thought I'll hear him out. And he says, I left the priesthood. And he says, now I have this really fulfilling career working with, you know, um, youth and doing these amazing things. And he, and he genuflects and he looks over to me and he goes, it's called chapter two and you're allowed. And I think that is like, that is the title of one of my, uh, most uh, asked for keynote lectures is that it is you're allowed you know at some point you're allowed to walk away from a calling if it feeds your soul you know and yeah. and all and if you look at what the calling meant for you and what it gave you like fulfillment and sense of purpose and helping you can you can take all those to the next thing you know and and it's just going to be a different way it doesn't mean you change who you are it just means that you know when i'm a 25 year old lawyer and i want to save the world and i think i'm going to die at my desk I had no idea how much toll that was going to take on me in terms of like caring so much about people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How did you make so the first time? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say the first time it wasn't particularly like, what should I do trend wise? It was just, I got to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. But so then was it that you looked at sort of what was going on or, you know, how did you figure out the right place to be or the next step? I was, um, I was, I was interesting. I was like a plus one for one of these seminars a friend of mine was doing, and he was a shy guy in real estate. He was actually an ex cop. And he's like, you can talk to anybody and I can't network. And I, the one I'm very good at networking. And so I said, he said, let me get you this ticket. And it was this expensive ticket. I'd never heard of making money online. I'd never heard of an entrepreneurship. I thought Facebook was a place you stalked your ex, took pictures of like your, your food and watched cat videos. I didn't know that you know, people were making money on this. And, and so oh God, that was funny. he went, he took me for free to this seminar. And I'm like, wait, people are, are like, they're like, oh, I'm an expert and I can do this. And I'm like, oh, you're an expert. What? Well, what do you do? He says, why well, teach people how to pass the bar? And I was like, oh, I'm a lawyer. How, what do you do? Gosh. And he goes, oh, I passed the bar. And I was like, 
that that's it. <laughs> I mean, you don't have like a technique. You weren't a great, and it's. I'm just thinking. So I, when I met those folks, I have to tell you, this is what my one like sort of arrogant admission. I've never had imposter syndrome after that seminar. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Like, look at these bozos. Like, that's but funny. that's yeah, that's and then I kind of learned that you could sell online, and I thought, well, I'll I'm really good at being a lawyer. I'll teach people how to be a lawyer, and I'll learn how you know to market this video course. And that's when they came in with this t uh, Facebook ads, and that's when I really got started. And Teaching people how to be better at being a lawyer was probably not the best first choice because I was a public defender, which means if you can't afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you. Meaning I didn't have to go get clients. <laughs> they came to me. So I didn't know anything about billable hours. I didn't know anything about making it rain. And, and you know, online, if people are going to pay you for something, it better be to get them paid, laid, or skinny. Those are the three <laughs> things that people will pay for. <laughs> and if you tell me that what you're selling doesn't do those, I will tell you how what you're selling does those if you're selling successfully. <laughs> yes. That's so, so true. That's yeah. a great way. There we go. So true. And so we'll see you. <laughs> you know, in, in, I, I want to bring this up because you mentioned that you went, you were invited as a guest to a seminar. And, and that's where I met you, actually, many years ago. You were at a mastermind. Um, but one thing I noticed after, and then we shared stages together, speaking at events and things like that. And we had loads of fun. And that's why I love you and brought you on because you're just really one of the funniest. And the feeling is mutual. Okay, thank you. Um, but here's the thing that you did that I think really helps your success and something we talk about a lot. The mastermind that we went to was literally one of the highest paid uh, grossing guys that was doing Amazon at the time, like he was doing $200 million a year. And we were at this mastermind together and you were doing Amazon also. Right. And oh, so you were learning from the best. Then I see you at another conference and you're like at his side, like glue learning everything there is to learn. You know, you were really surrounding yourselves with the right people and the other people you were surrounding yourselves with are the people who have one of the biggest software systems that help you be successful on that platform. So, you know, and then the next event, you were kind of going into the Shopify way and you were, again, surrounding yourselves with incredible people, people so that were just so successful. So I think that's such a, you know, a big thing that people don't really put enough uh you know, emphasis on is your network is truly your net worth. And I've seen you do this from scratch and grow these incredible businesses. So, you know, kudos to you for that. And um, I know it must be your humor that just allows you to enter all these circles, maybe. Well, I, I'm not shy. I'm not shy. And I, I, I might admit for, for, cause it is April fool. So people won't know if I'm kidding. Most of these are at bars. So that helps. <laughs> uh, but on a serious note, I mean, I made a point when I got into this business to, that I was just going to help people that that was, just, I was going to find people. So if you meet me at an event or you come to one of the events that I structure, which I do twice well before COVID twice a year in Vegas, big networking parties, I don't charge a penny. You know, you tell you just come and tell me what are you interested in? Who do you want to meet? I guarantee you, I know someone who wants to help you, who you can help, and I'll and I'll facilitate that. And if you have met me ever, and within the first five questions, I haven't asked you, you know, what do you need? How can I help you? Um, and it's, you're probably wrong. It wasn't me you met. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, but yeah. Are you planning on doing more of those events? Absolutely. As soon as up, so yeah, as soon as the world opens up, I do them at the uh, ASD uh, trade show in Las Vegas. Uh, usually in March, February, March, and then August. Um, so maybe this year, maybe August, we'll see. Um, and you don't have to be, you, you can be in any field. It doesn't matter. Just come and, and be willing to share your expertise. And I've really developed like a group of people that if I don't know, you know, how to help you, I can call this person who doesn't know you, but he knows he's going to get on the phone and talk to you because, you know, down the road, he's going to want somebody and he knows I'm going to want. So it's just this great connectivity that, I just believe in anyway, you know, I don't make money out of it other than, you know, karma. So that. as I listen to you, it seems like one of your strengths is that when you made that shift from corporate paycheck to a known paycheck, you had a lot of strength from your network. So do you have any recommendations or thoughts of how do you make that shift from a corporate paycheck to a new paycheck? 
I, I think that's that's the number one thing I probably miscalculated was um, the mental aspect of it. So I replaced my lawyer income within six months. But if you are in a job or a career where you go 25 years and every two weeks, you know exactly how much money is coming into your account to the penny. Right. I don't care if you just you know made thirty thousand dollars on one deal over here. When the fifteenth comes, you're like, "Where's my check?" I mean, it's your it's you know it's like Pavlovian, you know. There's like a little, <laughs> and so you it's a matter of of really sort of letting yourself have that freedom. And for me, what that was was I I retired from the public defender's office the minute that I could. It was a government job, so I. I waited until I got lifetime health care and I'm very blessed with my pension to have lifetime health care. Yeah. I recognize that is huge. Um, but then I downsized my life and I thought, you know, I'm not going to have the stress of this, you know, uh, lifestyle that had risen to my income level when I'm taking my income level away. So you can do that one of two ways. You can downsize your life with your savings or you could do it piecemeal like I did too, which is, you know, it took me six years from the moment I said I've had enough to the day I walked out the door. So it, it doesn't have to be right away. But the fact that I knew that was coming alleviated so much stress in my life. Because, you know, well, if you know that this is the rest of your life, you're going to be dealing with with people. I mean, you take a murder trial, forget, you know, it, the best murder trial, like the best outcome from the defense lawyer. If you have an innocent client, as your client goes home and you're still in a room with people who, on the one hand, have have lost a loved one suddenly and violent. And then the people in the room whose loved one is looking at the prospect of spending the rest of their life in a metal cage. Wow. And you, the stress is palpable, even if you quote unquote win. I mean, someone is still horrifically dead. And, you know, to know I only had to do that for X number of years made those years different than the year before where I was like, holy cow, I got another 30 years of this. Right. That's well, I don't know if that makes sense. Did you yeah. ever... Do you ever get burnt out at, at those cases when are those ho high profile cases? Did you ever get burnt out? And what what got you out of that? Well, the comedy, for instance. The comedy, yeah. I just, <laughs> Jesus and Pinot Noir kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, yeah, I mean, I was burned. I was burning out. I never got burnt out. And in fact, the case that I'm on now, I chose. And and that's what I want people to sort of understand. Like, you leave the calling, but when you come back, you control it. Like, I know I'm giving this client one thousand percent because she's all I have, and I and I have the means and the opportunity to do that. So. I, there's this 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 line in a Michelle Shock song called "The Secret to a Long Life is Knowing When It's Time to Go," right? <laughs> and and so leaving that job got me into Facebook advertising, selling T-shirts, and then got me into Amazon. And I was a private label seller on Amazon. And 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 this is what I think Tammy was talking about when it comes to pivots and trends. I started. I saw the writing on the wall. I got into supplements, which was what everyone that was the holy grail. Everyone wanted to be in it. I white labeled a probiotic to tell you how wild west and easy Amazon was in 2014. I did not know what a probiotic was and I was <laughs> two for probiotic. <laughs> and the minute I started seeing the competition come up, like I had paid maybe six or seven, eight thousand dollars to really rank where I needed to rank. And then I just started going down and down and down and down wow. and down. And then my friend who had sort of jokingly had this sort of race with, he gets to number two. And I said, how much are you paying to do that? And he was 70 grand into it at the time. And bless his heart, he did everything right. And it was a brilliant move because he cornered the market and he wound up selling his company. And it was it was not anything I was in a position to do. But um, I saw that trend and I started getting into really stupid products like butter dishes, steering wheel covers, you know, just a stable of dumb stuff that like, like, you know, if someone, uh, the, the joke was, if someone gave you something I sold on Amazon for Christmas, you'd slap them. <laughs> <laughs> but then I started seeing other sellers coming in and they were not only selling it cheaper, they were selling it cheaper than I was getting it in China. And, wow. and we won't get into this, but I had a company in China where I would that source stuff. I had like connections on the ground in China. Come to find out. I said, I said to my friends, I said, I think Amazon is stealing our info because this is not possible. And it turns out those companies were Amazon brands and all the people who told me I was paranoid when I was watching this sort of trend happen. Yeah. Bezos comes, testifies before Congress, what, two years later and says, yeah, we were scraping the data from third party sellers to see what we could sell with profit. And that happened to be all of those little trinkets. Oh. 
Wow. I was selling and that's what got me out to Shopify because I mean, I don't know anything about Jeff Bezos, but he's got enough money and I don't want to be building his business anymore. I don't want to, I, I, mean, I was building his customer list. I was doing his research and development. Right. right. Well, it's so yeah. good that you realize that, you know, and that you, you were kind of going, excuse me, something's wrong and nobody actually heard you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, and I it. It. can you do something about it? You say it again. You're a lawyer. Can you do something about it? No, no, I can't do anything about that. Like here's what I can do. I can stop working for him and start working for myself. So yes. So when I make a sale, I have my customer's name and email and I can give them, you know. That's and a big deal. It's yeah. a huge anyone starting out right now, uh, your customer's information. I mean, it seemed like such a a boon to me. Oh, Amazon's gonna handle all my customer service. This is great. Yeah, because they're their customers. Right. So anything you do, if you're thinking about they're out there trying to get into a new business, anything you do, you do something that gets you to keep your own customers, that keeps their information. I mean, if you're in a situation where you have to share that, that's fine, but you have to have your own customer list. So one of the things I love about what you do, Elena, is as you make these pivots and, and differences, start new chapters, you, as you just explained, one of the things that you need to do when you're no longer on Amazon and you go to Shopify is now you need a team to build these things for you that Amazon had done. And this is something that you also kind of jumped into, right? You found people yeah. who help not only you, but then others who came to you also, right? Right. And, and, and that's the thing. So, um, you know, with the, the Mark Twain quote that says, you know, when everyone's looking for gold, it's a good time to get in the pick and shovel business. Right. So when everyone was getting on Amazon, I partnered with this uh, fellow who spoke Mandarin and Cantonese who had sourcing agents in China. And we had the first trip where we took sellers to China and got them their own sourcing agents. So if you ask me right now, Lena, you've been in this game for nine years. The person who has made the most money selling online, selling on Amazon, what do they do? And they, they absolutely, it's a software person. It's somebody who helps people sell. It's not the person selling. That doesn't mean go, you know, build a software, which by the way, if you know how to do, you should do. I happen to <laughs> live in a home with a rotary phone for my landline. So that's not happening. In my life. <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> um, so, but I mean, you know, well, even and then you can do both. So, well, I was still selling on Amazon while I was helping people sell on Amazon. So now I have these successful Shopify stores, but I also have a service where I will build you a store just from scratch. And you just I hand you the keys. It's it's got merchandise that you design. We'll we have the designer teams. You can write it on the back of a napkin and we'll fix it for you. Um, and you have the store. So when I was starting out, that was the number one the number one, and I think you guys have probably thought of this too, when you're first starting out is I'm not technical enough, right? <laughs> we all are women of a certain age. It's like, we weren't, we didn't, I don't know about y'all, but I didn't have an iPad in my crib, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so, and a lot of the gurus talk to their 24 year old bro dude friends who are living in their parents' basement gaming and then making millions on the side over here and then gaming and then making millions. And right. we're like, that's not our lives, right? No. So no. I'm, I'm trying to sort of talk to the people who think that this has passed them by to tell you it has not. <laughs> it's called chapter two and you're allowed and you have permission. You have permission to try something else. When, whenever I was training new lawyers and they wanted to try something or do something, they always came to me and they asked me, what do I do? And 99% of the time they knew what to do. Yeah. They knew what to do. They just wanted my permission to say, yeah, do it. And so if you're out there thinking, hey, I want to try this. No one's saying go in and tell your job, your boss to shove his job. We're saying, you know, just get a toe in the water. You know, it's so much easier than it used to be. You don't have to build a website. That's you don't true. have to get your own credit card processor. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, so, it's so true. Yeah. So my, I, um, about 10 year, maybe 12 years ago, I built an app on the, on the internet. Yeah. It really? cost me, listen to this. I paid a hundred thousand dollars a month in hosting fees. One hundred thousand dollars a month in hosting fees. I paid three million dollars for software development. And today I could make that app for on GitHub for probably ten thousand bucks and go to GoDaddy and host my app. That's yeah. how much this industry has a hundred percent pivoted. Wow. To the, uh, today it's all about marketing and finding the right niche and figuring out how to connect that niche to you and make money doing it. 
That's really? it, it's such a perfect example. I mean, the yeah. platform Shopify, oh, right? Yeah. So from 2019 to 2020, and Shopify is just for those out there, it's just a platform that allows you to have your own website and it is plug and play. You, you post this here, enter your name here, enter this here, enter drag and drop. You know, it, it's so, so easy. And if you're completely flummoxed, you can pay someone to build your store for hundred dollars. From 2019 to 2020, the stock price of Shopify yep. went from 138 to $400. From 20 to 2021, it went from 400 to $1,163. Wow. That's a big wow. pick and shovel right there. But that shows you how many people are taking advantage of what used to be a barrier to entry for folks like us. So true. Yeah. I'm sure these well, are all folks points like us, except for Kathy, because she, right. she was way ahead of her time. <laughs> well, but you know, it's interesting back. Uh, it turned out, by the way, that my experience with the government is how my personal computer store thrived when many didn't, because what did I learn from the government? I knew how to bid on contracts. Yeah. And so we were in, I lived in the Kansas City Regional Office. And at that time, the demand for kits, Steve Jobs kits came from schools. We, with our government background, won every bid, every single bid. And that's how our store thrived. And still, uh, my partner died about 10 years ago three years ago, I'm sorry. And that, that store was still there. And we, wow. we built that based upon what we learned in our corporate life. And I'm sure yeah. you have some of that too. 100%. So, so two quick points on that. And that, and that I, so one of the, I, I took this year off to write a book based on the, the what I learned in trials to be yeah. a better business person. And I stopped that book and started a new book based on what we're talking about here, which is here is the opportunity and how you get into it. And so many, and especially women, we sell ourselves short. They're like, I couldn't do that. I've only worked in a retail store. It's like, you worked in a retail store. Okay, so you know customer service, you know inventory management, you know. I mean, they don't realize that, oh, well, I'm a housewife. Okay, so you've got what kids that you've got to organize. And I mean, you're a project manager for a team of virtual assistants. I mean, right. you know, <laughs> just don't, they it's don't true. see that these things translate, right? It, it's like true. when we were when we were in college, we would come up with these funny, uh, you know, things for our our. Uh, experience for the resume, you know, so I was a social chemist because I was a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's the same thing. We have these skills that, you know, and, and Tammy, you brought up networking. I mean, if you're 24 years old and you've never picked up a real telephone and made a phone call, and I'm not trying to diss whatever the 24 year old Jen, but it is Q. I don't know what y'all are now, but um, <laughs> you know, it, it's people skills and they don't all lack it. I'm not saying that, but given the choice, they'd rather text than call. So even the guy that wanted me to go to this conference and even like what you were saying, Tammy, with like some of these biggest um, software sellers that I'm right next to, because they came to me and said, will you introduce me to people? Will you help me meet people? Because wow. they knew how to sit there and code, but they didn't know, you know, yeah. and then sadly, at least two of them have told me and guys, if there's any guys out there or young women that are that are, you know, making software and someone my age helps you. Please do not let us know how close in age I am to your mother. I do not <laughs> not useful information. Oh That's <laughs> awesome. I know that um, Margie, our producer extraordinaire behind the scenes here, is saying that people are interested in finding out how to follow you and uh, and get in touch with you. So, what's the best way for them to right do that? now? So, I'm I'm on Instagram. I just got on Instagram. Nice. Yeah. Now I didn't even realize this because apparently I had a name out there. So I didn't have my own name available to me on Instagram. So even though it sounds really, you know, arrogant hoagie, my actual name is Elena Saris official on, on Instagram. I had to do that because like 12 other people had become Elena Saris. Is there any underscores in there or is it just Elena Saris official? Cause I'll put it up. Like I have to look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so you're not going with an iPad in your crib. Okay. No, and if you think <laughs> that you're that you're too, you know, um, I don't even know where to look. Like, at yes, it's all one, all all the same, all all along the words. No, all no. One, okay, so I'll put it. And up then there. Um, this book that's coming is is specifically for people who who are just aren't sure, want to know what the opportunities are out there. Um, uh, I wanted to do this with with you guys on April first, knowing that this book wouldn't be available yet, but. If you go to www.wewillshowyouhow.com, you'll see language about Amazon, but basically that's an email list where I will send you this book for free um, and I will, and then you'll be uh, told of everything that's coming up. So just don't worry about what it says in terms of, oh, if you're here, it's because you want to get off Amazon and get into Shopify. 
just put your name in there and I will make sure I get anybody who asks for that, the, the book for free. Even if you've already been started, it has some stuff about like mindsets and, you know, there's a big difference between pivots and shiny objects too. We have to keep that in mind. You know, we, when, when we're moving oh, yeah. because it's Tell us more about that. Yeah. Well, we want to we want to move into something new because you, you recognize an opportunity versus, OK, I've decided I'm going to be a Shopify seller. And then, uh, oh, look, squirrel, you know, I, I this this person just wrote me and said I can have a course on Pinterest. Oh, wait over here. So you have to have some level of focus. You really do. But I do want I, I want people to feel like, you know, it's not. I know I got yelled at about shiny objects a lot. And now what I wound up doing is I have these three businesses that are going really well. And I, I work about three hours a day. I mean, and these businesses sort of run themselves. It took a long time, you know, to get that all in place, but it's in place now. And that's why I decided to open this agency to do these done for you stores. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. So, yeah. Well, I think some people will be interested in that as well. So is that the best way for them to what you what we just placed in the chat? Yeah. I mean, those are the best ways for them to find out more about what you're doing with Shopify as well. And to prove once again that I am a Luddite, you need the WWW. Otherwise, <laughs> I, don't, I just I hope people take take away that, it you know, lack of tech skills is not a good excuse. Just if you think you have that, let's set up a Zoom, put out your hand. I'll slap your hand virtually and tell you to get over yourself. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the secret to getting ahead is getting started, right? Another Mark Twain quote. <laughs> the secret to getting ahead is getting started. Yes. Wow. Okay. And so, people like to get mentored too, or just being pushed. They really need the push these days, especially, you know, what's going on with the whole world. It's like people just tend to like feel defeated. So, right. and, but I mean, just look at e-commerce. I mean, Look at the trust factor. We're ordering toilet paper over the internet now, right? I mean, we it's 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 commonplace. And that's why if you if you guys are, you know, starting on anything, get into a Facebook group, get into a community of like-minded people. And again, if you at that when I when you sign up for that, we'll have all of that ready. Um, I just sort of, you know, I, I, I wish April Fools came in May, but oh uh, maybe I'll come back with the release really tequila in your in your uh, coffee cup. <laughs> Well, they but, say you know, the, the silver lining of COVID is COVID is e-commerce. It's yeah. e-commerce. Without a doubt, we've escalated. And the other thing that we're going to see this huge trend towards is digital documents. That's where we're going. So absolutely, digital document, digital, digital almost document. everything. I mean, Everything's going digital. So if you have knowledge, there is a place for somebody out there. I, I mean, people are personal training. People are doing therapy. People are doing financial advice. And everything. and like everything everything and and you know again you don't have to be the world's leading expert you just have to know more than the person who wants the knowledge that you have to share right yep. and you have to be able to share it in a way that and I, and i think this is where i excel just coming from you know being a, a trial lawyer you, you know I, I always you know sort of likened a, a jury to that bar in star wars where like everyone stopped <laughs> over and like not everybody was just you know here's a landscape yep. architect sitting next to a doctor sitting next to a mechanic sitting next to a skateboarder and I've got to explain the same concept to these people so that so you know find people that you want to follow that aren't just successful but that speak to you speak your language and have uh, made other people successful that's such good advice yeah Is there, we have just time for like maybe one more nugget so Elena if there's okay. one thing that you could tell somebody, particularly let's just say around mindset, we'll give you a little bit of a niche there so you don't, because I know, give us one tip, everybody goes, ah! If As far as mindset and getting your head in the right place to make a shift in your life, what is one thing you want to leave our audience with? Basically, I guess, gosh, one thing. Okay, yes, I know, right? a lawyer to do one thing. All right. I would I would say it is it has to do around this idea of giving yourself permission. You know, th this is our one life. This is our one shot around this, you know, cosmic roller coaster of a planet. And if if we're not happy, we need to change something. And, and I don't just mean, you know, happy every day. You're not going to be happy every day, but content and fulfilled and living a life you're proud of. Um, you need to change something and you don't have to change it all at once. It, it starts with being grateful for all the wonderful things that you do have. And then with just giving yourself permission to be someone else. You know, I, I was raised that you had to be a doctor or a lawyer and you had to go to school because, you know, you had this education and God forbid I walk away from that, you know, and, and the, the stress of that. But the minute I gave myself permission to do that, I thought, 
gosh, if I was successful in this, I'm going to be successful in that, you know, but I don't expect, don't expect to be successful tomorrow. Okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you didn't get as good at what you're doing now in one day. So if no. you screw up, don't give up, you know, the right. only, the only failure you in falling down is not getting back up. Right. What did you say it took you six years as part of your plan to transition at one point. So, oh, yeah. and I bombed well, big time. And if I had given up that first store where I, I lost like ten, fifteen thousand dollars, I mean, I wouldn't have done the second store that did three million dollars the next year. So you 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 got to let your, you know, give yourself permission to do something new. And, the you know, if it scares you, who cares? Yeah. And, you, know, <laughs> you know, errors are opportunity, right? Mistakes, errors are opportunity to you know, readjust. And as you said, you never would have had the success you had if you had let that little comparatively small, I'm sure it didn't seem small at the time, <laughs> loss happen. So. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's like, you know, face your fear, do it anyway. There's, you know, you're not going to be homeless tomorrow. You know, like I said, don't walk into your office and tell your boss off, just, you know, take an hour to yourself at night on the side and, and, and baby toe into it, but you can do yeah. it. Beautiful. That's what I here. This has been great. That's what I tell my students. Failure is not an option. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's also what did Zig Zig Ziglar say? It's an event. Failure is an event, not a person. Right? You know, yesterday ended last night. Okay, let's go. We move on. Yeah, yeah. Great. Moving on. Yeah. Well, we, we yeah. hate to see you go, but we want to thank you so much for being here. This has been great. And um, we'll we'll make sure that in the comments uh, underneath the video as well, we're going to have your link so people can get in touch with you. And um, we hope to see you again soon. All right. Thank, thank you, guys. So much, this Selena. was wonderful. Appreciate you. Bye. Oh, she's awesome. Oh, my God. Right? I, can't wait. I want to hear her do a stand-up com comedian spiel. <laughs> Comedy yeah. spiel. That'd be so all, cool. all I remember is her saying in the end, I run these three businesses, these three successful you know, businesses, and I work three hours a day. I'm like, you are my hero. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hero. Yep. That's amazing. Took some time though, you know, like she said, but but she uh, created systems around them, yes. and I love how she not only does it herself, but she teaches people along the way. So she brings people with her. So yeah. uh, she was doing, you know, sourcing in in uh, Asia. She would do trips and help other bring other people with her um, to to share the love. So she's definitely one um, to follow and. Um, you'll have a lot of fun in her community and her, her tribe. So yes. Good, good Is, does she have a Facebook page as well? I know she has. So it's, has if you just join there, then you'll kind of be connected to her network. So that was the, we will help. We will show you here. Let me put it again. We will show you how.com. Okay. And then yeah. you kind of just get into her network from there. <clears throat> you know, to do. then yeah. you come to her tribe and, and she'll invite you into the groups. But and she's often on several speaking circuits in the e-commerce world, too. So, you know, if you see her on the on the list of speakers, go see her because she's go, by go far. Sit with her. Her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think we should all go take a trip in August and go to Vegas because that's where I, she I, 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 is great I, in Vegas. Right? In August. <laughs> I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> oh, that's right. Nobody goes outside in Vegas, so it's okay. Yeah, that's true, right? Oh, we can have coffee, too. our special coffee with the queens in Vegas in August. <laughs> Actually, Vegas last week, my grandson was there. Vegas is so busy right now. It's wow. like all the seniors. I imagine. Back thing. Oh, it's, it's totally back to Vegas. Exactly. Mm. Mm. So exactly. Let's, share, yeah. let's, let's share a quote. Let's share a quote right now, you guys. Um, this one is, I decided to do something on humor because it seemed appropriate with our guests and the fact that it is April Fool's Day. Really? But it's funny because this quote on humor comes from somebody that does not automatically strike you as being particularly funny. This comes from Dwight D. Eisenhower, right? <laughs> but this is what I love because of how he tied humor into other things. So a sense of humor is part of the art of leadership, of getting along with people, of getting things done. And I think Elena actually demonstrated that quite a bit of getting along with people. She talked about how easy it was for her to network. I think in good part that has to do with her, her state of mind and that happy state that she seems to be in most of the time. It's easy to connect with somebody when they're smiling and they're having a good time. Right. Indeed. I love that. And in Indeed. the end, you know, you're the only one that wakes up in the morning. You got to get out of that bed. Nobody's going to help you. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> well, unless you need help, but that's <laughs> right. I was thinking, well, <laughs> it is possible. Well, sure, I think this is my, an, uh, another awesome um, show. And don't forget, check out our sponsor, so Haley, who has her 90 days to, to sculpt your body back into shape after our pandemic pounds have loaded on. So thanks again to Sohila for sponsoring today. And we look forward to next week because next week we are going to be showing you how to get yourself on TV. Yeah. All right. For now, we're out. Bye. Bye.